it was a, uh, you know, it was a struggle story like uh, a lot of folks have, you know, no money, uh, trying to learn the language, learn the culture, and my dad was a really good journalist. I mean, he wrote English, uh, you know, and I have a uh, reasonable ability to uh, write, and, uh, you know, write all the copy and all our packages and stuff like that, so, but I learned it from him. So my dad was uh, a real inspiration. He's laid back, it wasn't a uh, show-off kind of guy, but he was always in the background, you know, uh, teaching. And he's not the kind of parent that would, you know, scold you or beat you, but it would be uh, all one of, uh, you know, mentoring and having, uh, learning uh, lessons. So I'd have these father-son talks. Every, every time I did something bad, he sits there, I sit here, and uh, he's going to talk to me about it. Music was uh, and is currently, you know, the uh, reason why uh, I was doing business. And uh, it was an audiophile. I don't know if you folks know what an audiophile is. It's one of these crazy dudes who listens to speakers, listens to phono cartridges, listens to vinyls. and. Yeah, because we didn't have video in those days. It was all about uh, the audio. So uh, my passion was uh, music. And uh, when I uh, got into the music business, I got uh, uh, started to learn how to play drums, played in the band. The band got uh, an offer to go on world tour. And so I've been involved in music ever since then. And you played music or you were a listener and listened to music. Now, most people do kind of casual listening, but a serious audiophile uh, has the perfect speakers and the perfect alignment of the room, uh, you know, acoustics and all that. And I said, I want to be part of making music better. Uh, having speakers uh, that people buy and making them sound better. And I had no money to buy new amplifiers and uh, new speakers, so I looked around and I said, you know what? Everybody's using a really thin, thin speaker wire. And if thin is okay, then bigger must be better. So that's when I started experimenting around with uh, different conductors, different gauges of wire, and uh, develop a critical listening sense so I could change a gauge of wire, you know, the thickness of a wire, and I could tell the difference. But the engineering community didn't believe me. And they called me a, uh, a liar, a fraud, and, and you can go look up online. And we were just like really beat up. Uh, but we were right, they were wrong. If you have, I mean, while you folks are in school, uh, you say, oh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna be an engineer or I'm gonna be a, a fireman or whatever. So, uh, and right now, those of you in the room want to be entrepreneurs, I think. So uh, I had no sense of any of that. So I was going to graduate from college, find an engineering job, and I didn't know what a non-engineering uh, job was. I didn't know anything about it. You do it for the money, you're gonna wait a long time. <laughs> but uh, when uh, uh, we, we yeah, so uh, I landmark um, our start of the company is when I filed the trademark. So we have a trademark that was uh, allowed to us in 1978. And you gotta remember, a company called Monster didn't exist. The only monster that was in the early days was the Cookie Monster. Oh. Yeah, and now they're, you know, over 5,000 monster companies, Monster Energy, Monster dot com, uh, Monster Inc. So uh, we started something that was uh, really took over and it was probably one of the best uh, brands in the history of branding. The uh, obstacle was getting the cables made, okay, because nobody had ever heard of making cables with multi-conductors and, you know, people were making cables for, you know, telephone poles and uh, whatever. And it was ugly, it was stiff, you know, gray insulation. Uh, and I said, no, no, that's not what I want. I want something 
that's super clear. I want the copper to show. I want the windings to be able to reflect off the light. I couldn't find any manufacturers who knew how to do that. You know, they, I go to a wire company, they go, what? Why do you want it clear? No, I want it as clear as water. Okay, and I want it to be flexible. It can't be stiff. I had what I call the uh, wet noodle test. What's the wet noodle test? Well, you take most cables and they're really stiff. The wet noodle test is you hold the cable out and it falls. So, uh, oh, so you have a specification that says wet noodle? Yeah, so I want a wet noodle. It's gotta be clear as glass. Okay, and the copper's gotta show and they thought I was crazy. But the end product looked fabulous. But I had to first create it, then take it out to uh, uh, retailers at that time, you know, no Amazon, fortunately or unfortunately. But uh, at that time, there was no internet. So you can imagine, I got this great invention. I have these great ideas, and I got no money. So how do I tell people what I got? So uh, we had to do it, or I had to do it, one retailer at a time, taking cable, monster cable, regular cable, had a little switcher, goes back and forth. Oh, wow, I didn't know cables could make that kind of a difference. And then the retailers would say, ah, uh, you know what? You want me to sell that cable for a dollar a foot when I'm giving it away for free now? Nobody's gonna buy it. I said, wait a minute, listen to what you just said. You give them away for free now. So if uh, you sell Monster Cable uh, for $20, you make 10. And you save the free wire, you would have given away, which is another $3. So you made $13 in that sale. And the retailers would say, hey, you're right. Can I get one of those switchers? So we would train the sales on Donato. She was there for all of it. Uh, that uh, we would train uh, the retailers and the salespeople how to present the product, how to overcome the objections, overcome the negative stigma that this should not work, and prove people wrong. Said, well, uh, so many, you know, so many lessons. You know, you could say it's about the entrepreneurial spirit, it's about creating a culture, it's about hiring good uh, employees. And at that time, we couldn't afford good employees. We just you know, put a mirror and they fogged it up. You know, you're a monster. So, uh, and, and then we would convert them to be part of the culture. You know, this whole thing that we got called Monster Mottos and uh, we created this thing called Monster Attitude. Okay, we'd have t-shirts that uh, crew, uh, you know, blew up the culture that Monster Attitude is about doing the best you can at whatever you do. Let's say uh, tolerance, patience, perseverance. Remember, especially where you, go, you folks are now, and let's say you go out and start your own business or you're working for a business and you know, one, two years, five years go by, you're always in startup mode. I mean, so if somebody gives you a fortune, Okay, uh, and so, okay, look at the, you, you inherited, uh, you know, $10 million, go out and start your company. No, no, you're always in startup mode. What that means is you're always scrappy. You're always looking for different ways to do it. But you should have, uh, what's important is uh, your integrity, your honesty, uh, how you behave to uh, your employees, because not any one person is gonna make something uh, good happen. You need a team. And uh, a team needs a leader. So I hope each one of you folks, uh, as an entrepreneur, learn how to be a benevolent leader that people want to follow. And that's the other thing that people said, you know, what is a leader? Well, a leader, you could be uh, autocratic, you could boss people around, I'm the boss and I'm the leader. No, no, a leader, as followers, just by definition. And if you don't have followers, you're not a leader. So if you think about uh, what you might do in the future, be a great leader, be inspirational, 
and uh, you will succeed with your perseverance. And if it goes down, get back up. Okay, and uh, all the successful entrepreneurs have fallen many times and learned from that before they became successful. It was because I didn't know any better. Had I gone to business school like you guys have, and you say, oh, we gotta do the financials, we gotta do the projections. <laughs> I don't know how to do any of that stuff. <laughs> so it's kind of like blind faith. You know, you, you kind of run it, you don't know where you're going, you're just charging ahead. Time is plentiful. At my age, I start counting backwards. You know, what, uh, it, if you waste your time doing something that's not productive, that time will never come back. So that's why everybody knows I, I'm up till two or three in the morning, you know, watching YouTube videos, learning, always learning. And uh, the capacity and the ability to learn today is better than it ever was in, in the history of mankind. So you should take uh, advantage of that and don't waste time.